Good evening, Chris Herter, KF7WX. I will be your instructor for the upcoming fundamental class in CW. And um, thank you for signing up. Welcome. This is going to be a good class. You guys will enjoy it. Um, learning to receive Morse code accurately is the main goal of the course. But learning how to send CW accurately is just as critical. And for that, you'll need a good key. A straight key isn't going to work for this class. You can get 10, maybe 15 words per minute out of those things, but as you move up much past that to 20 and 30 words a minute, they'll just hold you back. You'll have to have an iambic key or a semi-automatic uh, key like a bug. There's a lot of different uh, iambic paddles out there, so how do you choose? How does a hand choose? Uh, I will reassure you that any of the high-quality keys that, that are available out there, um, they'll all work just fine for you. But there are some must-have properties. Uh, number one, weight. They need to be heavy. They need to be heavy enough so that they don't slide around the table. Three pounds is uh, a good target. Um, Ten pounds would be better, actually. They need to stay put. Narrow spacing is also important, particularly for operators that want to um, send quickly. So we're talking about five sixteenths to up to maybe a half an inch, but anything above that makes... Um, uh, operating at high speed more challenging. Spring versus magnetic return. Not a, a deal breaker for me. I've used um, uh, both types. I think magnetic returns a little smoother, but I've had uh, good experience with some spring return devices as well. Some of these, uh, by the way, can be big. These devices uh, can take a lot of space, so make sure you have enough on your table. All right, semi-automatic versus an iambic key. So what's the difference? Well, bugs, the semi-automatic keys, um, sound very good under the hands of an experienced operator, and they sound terrible in the hands of pretty much anybody else. Actually, I have to tell you that even people who are experienced operators have trouble making those things sound um, very good. But um, ideally, uh, once you're trained, you ought to be able to operate um, about the same speed either way. Okay, so put your seatbelts on. These things are not cheap. We're talking about 150 bucks probably for the the um, lowest entry key. Average probably closer to um, $250. Okay, there there's just like in life, lots of cheaper options. But um, you know, buyer be beware on those. The less expensive keys have a lot of plastic, and you'll hate them, and you'll drop out of my course. All right, so this is important. Do not come to class with those portable keys. Now, they're meant for experienced operators who are already proficient with the standard iambic key. So let me demonstrate some of my own equipment. I, I like all these keys. We will begin with the URI, UR5 CDX's keys. This is the Aridon. It's very well made and precise. I like the paddles. It's just a smooth key. Tony N3ZN produces great keys. This is his N, uh, ZN9 Plus key. Um, I really like the way those paddles feel. My March keys. It's beautiful. Hand machine. Fun to use. I really like the uh, magnetic return on these. Bengali. Not Bengali. Bengali keys. This is a contour. Very precise Italian key. Fun to use. It weighs a ton, which is great. And this is a mono key from UR5 CDX. Mono keys uh, uh, have just one paddle, and uh, one direction is dots, one direction is dashes. They are very fast, but the technique is different, so it gets kind of difficult to switch between them. Some ops who use a, uh, a mono paddle have difficulty going back to a standard and vice versa. So I kind of have to choose one or the other. But they are very fast, and high-speed operators uh, generally prefer the mono keys. All right, so here's uh, the Vibroplex bug. Uh, you hold it just like you would an iambic key, if you notice how I've got my fingers on there. Uh, the bencher paddle I'm, I'm putting in here because I don't have my, my bencher uh, with me right now. Um, it's a, a fine entry key. It needs to be heavier. Okay, some other equipment to consider. Kent Keys, it's uh, cost-effective, uh, well-made, and um, uh, smooth magnetic return key. 
Next is uh, the GHD key um, from a uh, company in Japan. An excellent key with spring returns, but smooth enough so this uh, competes favorably to other keys that have magnetic return. HA8KF has uh, a whole line of very well made keys. The Vibroplex iambic key is well liked by many people. There's one called the Vibro Cube, which is heavy. Unusual design, but um, uh, a lot of people like it. And then finally, I'm going to mention Sure Keys, S C H U R R. Um, this uh, a company has been out of business for a while, but um, had the reputation of being the best key made uh, ever. You can occasionally find these uh, for sale on the um, on online forums for $500 or more. If you happen to find one, I would buy it. Um, they are supposedly the best of the best. Any questions, send me an email. Welcome to the fundamental course in Morse code from CW Ops. I look forward to seeing each of you in a few weeks or perhaps sooner if I catch you on the air. I got the link to this video from my welcome email. That address is what you would use to message me. And finally, if you're curious about who I am, um, check out my QRZ page. Look forward to seeing you guys uh, soon, uh, 73s, and um, take care.